Welcome back to Craving More. With your co-hosts, <laughs> Matt and CJ. <laughs> I've never said that before. I was like, oh, uh, uh. I was waiting on it. And go. You can't trust me with big responsibilities. Yeah, that's too much going on. Yeah, you know I won't make it work. Hey, we have a guest via Zoom today. I don't know if they think Austin's a guest. No, he's probably more of a co-captain. Austin's leading this podcast. Today. I like that one. Co-captain. Co-captain. <laughs> Maybe like the third in command. Third in command. I like it. <laughs> we don't have a second in command, but you skip straight to third. I think you. I think you would be. We're co-commanders, and that would be second in command. Yeah, you're fourth in command. Or nah. fourth. <laughs> There's just got to be a gap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Cool. We still have these handheld mics because I've not invested in mics yet to use so we're using Matt doesn't like my mics I, I like them I just don't like holding them because I fidget too much are you much. complaining and then you I'll know start what we have to do when you complain start what a good that. segue into this podcast Austin Matt's complaining my, wait I don't know where my microphone's at on this but can you hear that yeah. <laughs> you whiffing <Yeah>. yourself <laughs> Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I hear you loud and clear. Loud and clear. So, what are we going to talk about today, guys? Uh, I thought uh, this would be a good time to talk about mindset for one of our podcasts. Oh, mm. yeah. It's interesting. We, uh, myself, D, oh, that's so much Nate, Nick Kerwin, there's three of us that are going through the mayhem mindset game. It's called a game. They call it a game. The mindset game. Not a challenge. It's a game. Nate's doing it too? Uh-huh, Nate Kerwin. Yep, I'm into week two. D's in week three. Nate just started week one. Dude, all the good athletes get the cool opportunities. Yeah. Nate? <laughs> Nate set himself up for that cool opportunity by logging in on his own and <laughs> registering and paying and yeah. all that. Well, some people are See, proactive. Yeah, whatever. must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> yep. Hey, before we get sh before we get started, we've got some new decor here on our uh, tabletop. This is uh, from our friends. It's in uh, English and it's in German. So, uh, Christian, uh, who was an athlete for us and then got his uh, L1 before he moved back to, uh, to Germany. Actually, he decided to get his L1 and then move back to Germany. Um, they had uh, their twins, and they sent us uh, cards of their twins here. So, it's a pretty remarkable story. You know what we'll have to do? So, we'll have to have him on a podcast because his story, what the CrossFit community did for him and and uh, his time in eat is just stupid crazy. Um, I think we raised in a matter of literally two weeks, close to five hundred thousand dollars. Five, Jesus, through the CrossFit community. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I remember you telling me about his story. It's actually incredible. Yeah, we we need to get him on scheduled on here yeah. on Skype. So anyway, all right, new table decor. There it is. Um. <laughs> so mindset. Mindset for every day, mindset for the gym. What are you thinking? Yeah, Austin, lead us through this podcast. Yes and yes, right? <laughs> yeah. If you can't tell, we're winging this one. Do you need mindset for everything? <laughs> but, uh, Absolutely. I, I wanted to lead off with our um, wristbands since CJ talked about it already. And I don't know if anybody else has been seeing a couple of us wearing our wristbands around the gym. I listened to a podcast. And this like group of people that were training, they wear these wristbands. They all have matching ones. They say the same thing, no whining, no complaining, no excuses. And their goal of it is whenever somebody whines, complains, or makes an excuse, one person on the team that didn't complain or say that stuff will snap their own wrist 
saying that it's hurting the team as a whole and not just that individual. Mm. That's really good. Yeah. So does that mean, does that equate to the mindset you carry into a situation, whether it's at home or in the gym or at your workplace, your mindset directly affects those around you, right? Exactly. There was a term that was used on me on Monday. Um, you know, this mindset challenge that we're taking or mindset game that we're taking, there was a term that was used on me um, Monday and that, and that term was, you can either be the thermostat or you can be the thermometer. What are you going to be? I like that. That's actually really cool. What are you going to be? That's really cool. Yep. So what's that? Like you're either, you're so, either causing the temperature to rise or just getting like your... So you're the thermometer, so you're just rising and getting really pissed off, or you're like the <laughs> thermostat controlling. Yeah. So yeah. So here's here's the analogy they used. You know, from a coaching perspective, they're you know, like, "Hey, Matt, from a coaching perspective, you walk in the room, and the athletes that are in the room with you are instantly going to read your mindset, your presence, where you're at for that day, and they're going to adjust their attitude, their temperature, how they go after a workout." how they communicate with their other athletes purely based on you when you walk in because they're looking at you going, Hey, there's Matt. It's been there 11 years. He's the coach. What kind of attitudes he in? So you can walk into a room and just feed off of someone else. You're the thermometer. You're just going to blend and turn into whatever else is there. It's a temperature you're just going to turn into lukewarm <laughs> because that's the temperature of the group. Um, so, or you could walk into a room and be excited about the day. Be his his mind was purely focused on that, not focused on that plus five other things. Everyone that's coming up, hey, hey, man, I need you to, or hey, coach, I need you to, or hey, do you see my clean over here when you're trying to work out over here? You, you know what I mean? Um, so. You can either be the thermostat and you can set your attitude as you walk into the room, which is going to set the attitude for the entire room because you're the leader of that group. Or if you're a coach, you two are coaching the floor. How you approach that coaching session, you're setting the temperature for everyone else in that, in the, on the floor at that time. There's a lot of truth to that too. Mm -hmm. yep. Like we'll have, like I'll have athletes that'll come up and be like, like I'm coaching the 630 class at night. So everyone's they've had a whole day of work they're like tired already this is the last thing they have to do and they'll come up and be like dude you're gonna have to you're gonna have to really get us going today like i don't i don't really want to be here mm -hmm. and you're just like well good on you for being in like for being here you know and your energy definitely spills over into the class mm -hmm. like you can if you have a coach who just walks in there all like blase kind of you know just i mean the energy of that class goes down you know, and I, that's kind of like, like music too. the music of the class. Like if you're, if you're playing like slow country music, no one's going to want to do like a hardcore Metcon, you know? Right. So you can, I guess you can kind of think of it that way. Like if you're all upbeat, ready to go cheering everyone on, um, that whole, everyone else's mindsets all ramped up and they're more positive, like in a better place. What a good analogy, Matt. Uh, it wasn't mine. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, way to share. <laughs> but it was good. I I noticed it last night, and we and Austin, I'll let you jump back in there. But I noticed it last night because I tried to use Monday night. I was I tried to use it Monday night. It was awful because I was overthinking <laughs> it. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh man, where am I at? And how do I turn and flip that switch and you know, last night it was like, listen, I'm going, they, you know, the thought process was be in the moment, be fully committed to that moment, right? My old football coach used to say, be where you're at when you're there. Yes. Fully committed to it. And that's, and you're going to set the, you're going to be the thermostat and set the tem temperature for whatever you're doing at that point in time. If you're distracted, you you know, your thermostat drops a little bit because you're trying to spread yourself across a couple of avenues. So last night in the workout, it was like, hey, I'm here for this workout. A lot of times I'm there for the workout, but I've got six or seven other things, people, you know, Hey, can you come over here and take a look at this? Last night had one of those situations right in the middle of the workout, two athletes waiting at the top 
right at the desk. We were we were on the lifting platforms, and the second I dropped the bar and turned around, it was in my ear right away. You know, and I'm like, okay, listen, I thank you for the input, and I can't work with you right now because I'm going to go right back here. And I'm going to finish this, and it was okay. And they were like, yeah, okay, cool. And they went on about their way, and I turned around and I finished my set. And then jumped into the bike at the end. You saw us at the end of the, you know, doing the bike. And the only thing I thought about was that bike. The calories, the time domain, nothing else. Like nothing creeped in. Not what am I going to do tonight? What am I going to eat? How much work do I have to do tomorrow? How CJ's coaching. Yeah. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't hear CJ when he was coaching. Knew that there were athletes in class. Hey, what about Compete Force USA? How are you going to tackle that? Nothing. It was one calorie at a time. Perfect. Yeah. And then one of the other athletes in class, in, in not class, in our group that we're working out, they were like, man, I noticed a complete change. <laughs> like, yeah, I was focused. And like, yep. So thanks, D. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Austin. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking, like when you said that, like when it came up and you're like, Oh yeah, I'm, but I'm going back to my workout this time. It's one of those things for mindset. You're not going to be able to stop it right away, but just acknowledge it consciously, like what just happened, process it, and then get back to what you were doing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I think that's. I mean, like you said, you can't really stop it. So think of how many things in your life you just spread yourself out so thin. Like, of course, you're always like anxious or overwhelmed or stressed out. Like. You're trying to put all the energy you have into a thousand different places, but you're not focusing on fixing anything, you know? Mm -hmm. But I was going to go back to our little bands. Have you guys noticed anything that's changed in our training since we started wearing our bands and holding each other accountable and working out? Yeah, but so this is, I thought, this is me being arrogant. But I, I thought, I was like, I'm like, it's a cool idea. I don't really see how it could really do anything because we're all just going to like be ourselves, you know, probably all complain mm -hmm. anyway and just, but still put the work in, you know, um, but it was fun to like, it's fun to do. But then I noticed over time when we would do stuff like, and it's just such a little thing, just whapping yourself with a little band that doesn't even, it doesn't hurt or anything, but it's like that mm -hmm. it signifies something else, you know? Yeah. And I didn't even, the way, I didn't hear you explain it before um, when we first got them, but like, like you just did right now. Um, mm -hmm. But you do notice a lot with like, like I'll do it and Dee will look at me and like, kind of like roll her eyes and put her head back. And then just like, oh, yep, <laughs> got to get to work. Like, you know, or like, yeah. like she'll just like with D in particular, cause she always struggled with this, but she just like, she'll change her talk or the way she talks. Like, or like she'll say something and be like, well, it's not, it's not because I think it's like way too hard for me or whatever. I just know it's going to be, you know, like <laughs> she'll put it into not complaining, just like discussing through something. Like, yeah, I just think maybe I should break up my toes bar a little more to get through them. Or, um, so I think there actually really has been a shift and it really surprised me. What'd you, what's your thought process, Austin? Yeah, that was the same thing I noticed within the first couple of days that we started our wristbands was instead of complaining about our next workout like oh the transition from handstand push-ups to wall balls is going to suck and it's going to be stupid i don't want to do that it changed from that to all of us talking strategy before we got into the workout which i thought was super cool because that happened like two or three days in from wearing our wristbands and then the second thing that i noticed was just for me i don't know if it happened for anybody else but that little voice in the back of your head when you're on like calorie 35 of 50 when you just look up and it's like horrible that little voice starts to dull down a little bit because i've been like aware of like oh like this is where my body's like this starts to hurt my mind starts to go to that place where you're like you could just stop or go slower and like being able to like i said acknowledge it and then push through that has been really cool 100 percent agree with you i i felt that just last night on that on that last bike part was just some 90 seconds of agony, right? It's just no fun. But halfway through it, you're like, I've got two choices here. I can, can 
up here, I can continue to think how awful this is, and it's going to be awful. Or I can say, hey, it's one calorie at a time, it's 90 seconds, put the work in, try to go as hard as you can, and be over. And instantly the pain goes away. You know, the, the breathing hard, and all that's all still there, but the pain that you put yourself in mentally goes away. At least I noticed that. Yeah, your body's yeah. still in pain, it's a, it's a hard workout, but you can make it much worse on yourself based on how you talk to yourself right. through that. Well, that's a whole self-talk thing, right? But that's, mm -hmm. it's coming from, there's two different types of mindset, right? Um, well, I guess, I don't know. You have like the growth mindset and the fixed mindset, but then like the positive mindset, negative mindset. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I don't know if that's a real thing, but there's definitely a more positive kind of mindset, right? So where you're, when you're more positive, it's like when you're doing wall balls and it really hurts, you're like, uh, yeah, it's supposed to, you know, mm -hmm. like. I'm doing what I need to do. Just get through it like one rep at a time. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then you're done. With When you're like in a negative mindset, you're dropping that wall ball, probably kicking it, just yelling, saying bad things under your breath. And that <laughs> it takes so much longer and so much more energy out of you and you don't enjoy it at all. So if you come from that with a positive light, like you're saying, just one rep at a time, one rep at a time, positive, get through it, and then you're good to go. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Being able to put like a positive spin on anything helps your mindset so much when being like, oh, I'm five away from being halfway and then I'm almost done or anything like that. It really helps. Even like a lot of people I see do it in class when I'm coaching, they like walk up to the barbell or something. They're like, oh, I just can't go right now. Being able to get rid of those like negative connotation words like I can't, I can't do it. I'm not going to be able to do it getting rid of those words helps your mindset right away. Cause if you're like, I'm going to try this, or I'm going to do it, just getting it in your head, crazy, the changes that'll happen. Yeah. Well you, I mean, you set the, you set the tone right away, right? You're mm -hmm. no matter, you could be joking or not joking. The, the subconscious part of your mind is going to take that in though. So if you're starting yeah. with, I can't, even if it's a joke, your subconscious mind's like a rock. It has no clue. It doesn't mm -hmm. know your personality or what what you're saying. It just takes that in as can't, can't, can't. Yep. Instead yes. of replacing it with like, I can or I will or more positive words. Right? Yeah. Or like if you're like cheering on an athlete, you don't say don't drop the bar because all they hear is don't. You yeah. say keep it up. Mm -hmm. Like simple mm -hmm. stuff like that, just being able to say it to yourself. Yeah. Because your brain will pick up on the negative words right away and just forget everything else like CJ said. Yeah. Yeah, and that's I mean that's the same thing with anything. Like like if you're golfing, I read a, this sports psychology book. This dude was a really good golfing coach. And he said the the worst thing you can do is if you keep shanking it, is just think, "All right, don't shank it. Just hit it down the middle." You shouldn't say, "Don't shake it." If you just say hit it down the middle, that's so mm -hmm. much better than saying, well, "I hope I don't go left," or, you know? <laughs> right. um, they say yeah. like it's like some stupid percentage of the time where you're going to hit it back to the left. Hey guys, I'm going to let you talk. I got a call from Walmart. Super important one. <laughs> I'm going to take. <laughs> I got oh. a call right back. <laughs> All right, go get him, Tiger. This is, he's putting a lot of trust into. Yeah. He is. So this gym is his business, right? Let's just. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's just said here, in your hands. Here's, here's the uh -huh. reins. Take it away, donkey. <laughs> oh, side note. Yeah. This is what happens when Matt leaves and stuff goes away, but. There's a, you can buy a miniature donkeys for like $200. What? Yeah. So I'm going to have an what? army of those things. We really need to get a CrossFit Crave like mascot. I know. A mini donkey. A mini donkey. That'd be so fun. <laughs> well, we should just bring it one time and just leave it there. I'll be, I don't know. I don't know what happened, Matt. <laughs> I don't know where that thing came from, but we can't get rid of it. Hopefully you don't listen to your own podcast. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens when we get the reins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, if we're just talking about random things before Matt gets back. <laughs> oh, the vlog one's almost done. Yeah, is <laughs> yeah. it good? I think it's pretty cool for a first one, dude. I'm pumped. It's you got to email stuff. that to me, dude. I will. So anybody that's made it this far into this podcast and is listening, <laughs> we're also gonna have a vlog. <laughs> yes, we need to have more podcasts like this where we just talk. Yeah, it's so much more fun to me. Oh, what I got to, since we're talking about mindset, I sent you guys that, because I'm reading uh, How Champions Think. 
Bob Rotella is talking about. Yeah. Good. And that's the way I was, quote. that's the book I talked about the golf coach. <laughs> yeah. That's why it made remind me of this since, uh, I read this quote. It was like in his book and I thought it was really cool. The day that you sent me the post that Matt is retiring. Oh, um, oh, says, don't make me cry on our podcast. It, no, in sports, if you're not aspiring to dominate to be the very best, you're coasting. Mm. How awesome is that, dude? I mean, it really speaks to what he's doing, though, right? Like, yeah. I, did you read the the Facebook thing that Matt put in the group chat about his reason for leaving? Yeah, dude. Like two weeks before the thing, he wasn't using a steak knife because he was afraid he'd cut his finger and it hurt his performance. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That dude. Just said for eight years, every decision was intentional. Yeah. And I believe that too. That's got to be like so stressful. Like, I mean, think of like the amount of pressure that puts on your family and everything, you know? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. But now I'm excited for his YouTube videos. Yeah. I mean, you don't become the five-time fittest man on earth going out and uh, going to the boardwalk on Fridays and Saturdays. Well, (laughs) don't give away our ranch loop. (laughs) Uh, No, but so I guess in in terms of the mindset thing, you got like, so when we were talking about how you can go with like the positive mindset, the negative mindset, how if you keep feeding negative things, you set the tone for everything. Yeah. Um, There's that. Do you know what brain plasticity is? You probably do. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're constantly feeding that, well, brain plasticity, I guess, is just like how the brain changes, right? So, like, yeah. Um, if you keep feeding that with negative, the first thing you are always going to think is something negative, and that's just you're just rewiring your brain to be negative, and that's yeah. not conducive to anything. But if you, even if you're lying to yourself when you say I can do this, like deep down you know that you probably can't do this, but you're just. Like I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Yeah, that's just training your subconscious to pick up on. You it. literally, your brain's a muscle too. You got to train that thing. Mm-hmm. And that applies to anything outside the gym too, like vlogging. Yeah, like vlogging. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it really does. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, any any new situation, right? If you can go, yeah. like it's so scary. I mean, you could relate it to the gym, I guess, but like walking into the gym for the first time, or like walking into an interview or you just, yeah. if you just train yourself to be positive and you go like work through hard things or uncomfortable situations, like you're, man, you're setting yourself up so much better and you might not even realize it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I don't have much life experience to prove that, but <laughs> <laughs> I read some books. <laughs> yeah. I read a couple books. So I pretty much know what I'm talking about. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. Well, how how busy can Walmart keep Matt? Dude. <laughs> I don't I'm never that guy is always on his phone. Even yeah, when he's on his phone. You won't be able to live without it. Yeah, we we proved that. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we talk about about mindset? Dude, so I got some random quotes. I got some random quotes in my phones. We'll just shoot shoot from the hip there. Oh, I have some quotes in my phone too. My first one, so I said embrace productive discomfort. So those uncomfortable situations. This might be my favorite quote ever, but it's just embrace productive discomfort. (laughs) Discomfort marks the place where the old way meets the new way. Push through the pain. If it doesn't challenge you, it will not change you. I like it. You can kind of like add a little bit to it, but um, I don't know. There's like, you have a partner or you're just trying to go through go through something, I guess, any hard situation, just let's go through hell together and laugh about it after. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to any workout like ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find my notes real quick. Yeah. I mean, I got, so I thought of this. My mind obviously just wanders into random places, but I was like, feeling down on myself one day and I was like what if I were just to go blind today wow like I'm not given who am I to take for granted what I see like there's so many beautiful things out there and I'm just mad that I'm 23 and don't know what I'm doing with my life yet like that's absolutely (laughs) ridiculous so I'm like 
like think how much you really want to give to the world, but but you're not. And I'm like, you go blind today, you're gonna regret all of that. So I was like, <laughs> get moving and enjoy every second of it. Yeah, because we're able to do what we do right now. Right. So how bad is something? Not we, you yeah. know. What sorry? What we saying? have to go work out. We get to go work out. And there's a big switch there too. There is. With just saying, yeah, you don't have to do something. You get to do something. Um, yeah. Like, you can, I get to do these burpees today. Right. One of the best things you can do to like switch your attitude in general is just to just to think it in your mind really quick. So like, yeah. If you're like, like this sucks. I suck. Whatever. The whole world hates me. Wow. Um, <laughs> Like the band, like the band that we have helps out a lot because yeah. what it does is like, you're just, you're feeling sorry for yourself, right? You see someone else whip your band because you are feeling sorry for yourself and you're like, yeah. Oh, so even like times that you don't notice you're being down in the dumps and mm-hmm. all that, somebody else can help you and it rec- helps you recognize that. And then it puts that thought in their mind, like, oh, I was going to say that same thing and agree with them, but just changing it right away there. And having a group of people to help you out with that, yeah, is amazing. Yeah, and then so you're like, like everyone wants to get somewhere, right? Like mm-hmm. you want to do whether I mean everyone's like kind of status there is different, or their timeline, what they want to do, whatever is different. But you you want to be something, and you want to be happy eventually. What, yeah. Who are you? And I mean me included, but who are you to go and just be like negative Nancy all the time, just down on yourself? Yeah, then you bring you know, other people down. Everyone knows that's not productive to your life. <laughs> but, I mean, so many people do it. Mm-hmm. But you can, I guess that's kind of goes to everything as well. Yeah, it really does. Like everyone knows not to eat sugar, but. <laughs> but I it's do so enjoy good. myself a good uh, Reese's cup every time. Pumpkin spice so. latte. <laughs> <laughs> Read me one of your quotes, dude. Um, I actually just read this other one. I don't know. It might have been. I'm rereading uh, Urban Meyer's book, Above the Line. Mm-hmm. I really like that one. And this one was, if no one thinks your goals are crazy, you're probably not aiming high enough. Uh, I like that one. That is a good one. I'm trying to see. I have Yeah, more that's like the, the same either. thing like – um. Shoot for the moon because even if you miss, holy shit, you're in space. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit, you're in space. <laughs> I pretty, like that. Pretty tight. Um, mm-hmm. Comparison is the thief of joy. I like that. I've heard that one before. Mm-hmm. That was a Matt Frazier. That was in his thing. But um, I don't know. One thing I heard that I really like is that if you need something done, give it to a busy person because they get stuff done. True. Why do they get stuff done? Because it's what they do. It's their mindset. It's what they've been exactly. doing. Exactly. You don't just wake up and be a busy person. You have to choose to be a busy person right. and get some crap done. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, too. With this 75 hard thing we're doing, Yeah. Like one of the worst things I thought would be would be waking up early in the morning and going on a ruck. Like, got to wake up at 5.30 walk out in January in Ohio and start walking around the roads, you know? But that has yeah. been the most, like, now I look forward to it. Like, I, I get up, just go yeah, walk. Yeah, I get to get up and go on a walk. Yeah. But you, you, like, just ingrain that pattern in your head. Like, it started off, like, the first week sucked. Yeah. And then you just, I mean, you get used to it, right? We're all, we're habitual. Mm-hmm. Oh, we could get into a whole nother discussion on mm-hmm. habits. Habits, yeah. Make it habitual. <laughs> mm-hmm. Make it easy to do. Well, and who's, whose standards are you saying something's hard by? You know? Mm-hmm. Like, are your covers are comfy? Well, some people don't get covers. <laughs> <laughs> some people sleep on the floor. Yeah. On a rock. <laughs> No, that's obviously extreme, but <laughs> but I mean for real, don't be soft, dude. That should be a podcast. Don't be soft. Don't be soft. Mm-hmm. There's a lot, though. I guess in the mindset realm, there's a lot you can go on based off like a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, 
like the growth mindset, you're always working towards getting better. You're in the positive mental state. Fixed mindset, you're just stuck where you are. You're fixed in a fixed yeah. position. You're not And it doesn't have to be like a big thing to, to try to start like right. moving towards the growth mindset. Like just just pick up a book that's gonna help you in some way. Yeah. Like I wanted to start getting back into reading. I asked CJ, Atomic Habits. Holy crap. Do you like I, it? Everybody, I think that should be a mandatory book for everybody nice. to read. James Clear is good. Yeah. It's just like... Wait, yeah, do you have that book? Those, yeah, I think I have it in mind. Is that like my book? No. Okay. I definitely lend that to someone and I don't know who has it. <laughs> I know there's one sitting on the counter in the box. It's been there for like a week. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's a great book. Then I covered with all my other books. There we go. We got... But yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. But yeah, just, I mean, start so small that it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's, it is, it's super easy just to like, just start getting rid of those negative words too. Yep. Or acknowledging when you say it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be like, oh, you got to come at this from a positive mindset too. But if you do get negative, don't beat yourself up that you got negative. Then it's just yeah. a double. That's a double negative. Yeah, Those just, don't just actually equal a positive. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. You learn from it. You're just like, oh, I gotta stop that. Like, but I'm happy I noticed it, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Because that's where you can really fall into a trap. Is like, woe is me. The world's against me, and they don't know that. Like people that do that don't know that they're doing that usually. And that's yeah. what makes it so bad. Dude, I'm going to read you this quote. We said it in the last podcast. Uh -huh. I don't know. Did you listen to that? Yeah, I did. Oh, I just, just ruined my game. Well, I mean, you can still read Way it. Way to be a follower. Quit <laughs> following my podcast, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> so if you tell a lie big enough, long enough, and strong enough, eventually people will believe you. I like it. Do you know who said tell it? That, tell that big lie to your brain. Yeah. Do you know who said that? No, I don't remember who said it. Hitler. <laughs> don't laugh. It's, well, I mean, <laughs> you can laugh, but... No, it's crazy how true that it, is. It is. But, I mean, the mind's powerful. It is. So if you just... You could do the same thing to your own brain. Mm -hmm. The happiness of your oh. life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. I like it. Dude. I tell you what, stick with me, Austin. <laughs> stick with me. Oh. Did you ever find your oh. notes? Yeah, I found one. Of, I found some of them. They're all over the place. As you know, I'm not an organized person. We're still working on that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not about perfect. It's about effort. And when you bring that effort every single day, that's when transformation happens and how change occurs. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. This whole podcast took a turn. We're just reading quotes now. I know. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> have you uh have you read um Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl? Mm -mm. That's a really good one. It de it it describes like a man's meaning, like I guess a search for meaning, but during the Holocaust. So he's yeah. a psychiatrist that went through the whole Holocaust. So he was in a bunch of different concentration camps and like um you see, like, uh, I guess he came up with a quote that kind of summed it all up, but suffering in and of itself is meaningless. We give our suffering meaning by the way in which we respond to it. I like that. Yeah. So it's like the suffering is meaningless, but the way we respond to it is what actually matters. Mm -hmm. So he said you could see a bunch of people that were in there that didn't have anything to go back to, and they they were the ones that, got like i mean we did out really early like they got a lot weaker a lot faster and stuff and mm -hmm. then the people that had like a wife or kids or uh, a job they love to get back to or something they were able to stick in there a lot longer um, and a lot of those guys made it out i like that yeah welcome back matt hey, thanks turn your mic on son hey thanks there we are <laughs> <laughs> we've just been off on random kind of random tangent no that's awesome you should never leave us astray again 
Yeah. Well, well sometimes. We're talking about other books. Maybe I read this one. The Seven Habits Habits of Highly Effective People. So it was that's, the first book I was given when I was hired on at Crown. Really? Really. Very first book. Twenty five years ago. That's my I heard that's on my list yeah, we, to read, but I didn't read it. Yeah. I heard about that it was a good one to read and like everybody should read this one. And then when we went to go see uh Drew, I saw it on his shelf. And then he like said he read this one when he was eighteen and had a completely different outlook. Mm-hmm. So I went and bought this one. Yeah, good. We, I should my, my longer probably read get that. in a while. I should probably read it again because it's been so long. But yeah, it's the first book. <laughs> Starting to be not an effective person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Hey, if you see a donkey in the gym sometime, don't worry about it. Yeah. No. It wasn't us. Yeah. Awesome. I promise. Okay, that's good. Some, I won't have to re we you know kind of as we release this podcast, watch it because I missed a quarter of it here. <laughs> um, you know you could get those donkeys for like two hundred dollars. Which donkeys? Miniature donkeys. Any donkeys? No kidding. Yeah, like real live that- miniature donkeys. Sweet. I thought it could be our mascot. Yeah, it we could, could have be. a whole army of them. Who's gonna feed it? The grass. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, you don't. Nope, they won't have to mow anymore. No, how are you going to cage it? How are you going to keep it uh, it'll, in our grass? A and stick and a string. Fence. Matt. Oh, tie it to a fence. <laughs> Got it. I like it. Why don't we just get a goat? Don't tease me. Why not both? Or why don't we just start a farm? We could have a gonky deal. Is a baby a gonky. Thing? Is there such a thing? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> What do we wrap up on mindset? Well, we were reading some quotes. We were waiting on your wisdom, really. Ooh. Yeah. Um, we are quite lost without you. Yeah, I doubt that. <laughs> Come on, guys. No, we, we talked about some books. We talked. To, we read some of our different quotes that we have in our phones and I have on my laptop. What else do you have to say about mindset? We are talking about like the same thing, going back to positive mindset and just being able to, like, get yourself in a growing mindset, like wanting to change mm-hmm. and have a better mindset, which is a big thing to try to do. But like we said, you just pick up a book. That's when I talked about atomic habits. Yeah. Right on. I think it, I think your mindset starts when you wake up. I think you're the way you wake up and the, the thought process you go through as you start your day sets the tone for the rest of the day realistically. But I really like the thermostat and the thermometer. That is a really good analogy. You know, when you walk into a situation, are you going to control the room um, in a positive way, or are you just going to blend and become a thermometer and, and just bleed off to whatever everyone else is doing? I think mm-hmm. you could take that in two different ways. So you could go with what you said. Are you going to take control of the room? Or, I mean, you could make that a little smaller and just are you going to take control of yourself? Yeah. Well, yeah, and by making – by taking control of yourself, yourself, by changing, if you had a bad day or you change your attitude as you come to the gym, that's naturally going to affect those around you. If, you. if you're in a leadership role. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even not. Let's say. It could. Yeah, yeah. no. It definitely could. You know, if you're just a, if you're taking the class and you're, um, I don't know, Andy Darris walks in and every day he walks in and he's, he's excited. Hey, Matty. You know, or, <laughs> you know, lightweight. He's yelling. That changes the the atmosphere. That changes the mood. Mm-hmm. If he comes in and doesn't say anything, you may not know that he's in a good or bad mood, but it didn't change anything in the class. It right. didn't affect the class, positive or negative. It just didn't affect. Mm-hmm. You know, so you you could be like Andy coming in and hey, what's up? Yeah, and no, that that's true. Instantly changes. He then is the thermostat because he's changing the elevation of you or right. me or. Can you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. But I guess what what I was thinking in terms of just and just yourself. So when you're when you walk into the gym and you're yelling and talking to people and it, then you are you're taking that kind of leadership role to kind of go out mm-hmm. and talk to people, you know. Right. But you could be in a room full of people that are just complaining and just not not happy with where they are. And if you can't change them, you can at least make yourself not that way. Right. You know? Yeah. For sure. So I guess on a lot smaller scale, you could kind of you know. That's kind of what I was saying. Yeah, change your own internal self. And mm-hmm. but you're completely right. You don't have to be in that necessarily leadership role right. to do that. Right. Yep. And you don't know. Yeah. You may 
if you don't walk into a situation where everyone's, you know, being, um, you know, Debbie Downer and negative Nancy, and you don't portray that, you keep to yourself, you just don't, you don't be the thermostat and change the room, you may change somebody that's watching you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? They 100%. may walk out of that and go, man, that CJ handled that way differently than everyone else. Maybe I could have taken a cue from that. And, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's super true. And I mean, you notice that like everyone does that, right? Like, or they see how someone reacts in a situation or like someone, someone falls and there's one person there and then the next person walks and they're like, oh, if I could, yeah. I should have just went over there. Like, you know, um, same thing with like your mindset there. Like, like I complained that whole time. This person didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. what a, what a tougher human than I am. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's a slippery slope to fall down when somebody else starts complaining then it's easy to just be like oh yeah that was horrible like mm-hmm. i don't want to have to ever do that again yep no question about it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then you got any that so then, like when we did the go ruck you saw that with so many there was like almost groups of people that you were either these guys are carrying the 120 pound sandbag with their ruck um, obviously look at like they're in a lot of pain but they'll be like like, oh, we're fine. Like, we're all right. Let's go. Like, just just pick it up. Keep going. Or, like, someone else will come swoop under it so then both of them are carrying at the same time. And they're just, like, kind of keep going. And then you have people in the back of the pack that are just, like, limping and can't even carry their bag that they brought. Like, and they're just complaining about how terrible it is all the time. And just, like, mm. like you have people that are going to rise up in those situations and people that are just going to stay low. Yeah. I, like I guess you so choose who you can be. I was like, I guess you can, I mean, you eventually choose who you're going to be, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and you can, I mean, you might be that person in the back of the pack, but what's preventing you from moving your way up? I was going to say, I didn't want to gloss over what Matt said when he said a positive and like productive person starts like when you wake up. So mm-hmm. having a good morning routine, like I've gotten myself into a good morning routine that's helped me be so much better with like my mindset. Like the first thing for me was I was one of those, like keep hitting snooze, like set my alarm like 30 minutes before so I can snooze like six times, but just like setting the one alarm, getting up then. And then another thing that helps me just right away, make your bed. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I used to not make my bed and leave it a mess, but it's like, it takes a minute to make your bed. And then just being able to say like, I made my bed, I can do the small things today. And then tackling the bigger things. Yeah, that's yeah, really good. A lot of people say, I don't, I hate making my bed. <laughs> this is terrible, <laughs> but I just don't. I'm not, you should try. It's a little you thing should, tomorrow. You try. I wake don't up. like doing it. I don't want to wake guess, up and you, do it. You wake, you wake up, you're like, I'm just going to get back in bed tonight. I don't need to make it. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it is. But like, at that same token, I have other things that I do in the morning as a, mm-hmm. like your routine, right? So like, like I get up in the morning and don't hit snooze, but I get up and I'll go on like a 45 minute walk. I always have to get my mm-hmm. walk in like, and that's a long time. If I don't, if I can't have that 45 minutes, like sometimes I'll work at like 3 a.m. I'll have calls. So I'll just wake up 15 minutes earlier than I was going to and do like a yoga session or something. Like I want to try to make it productive to me. I just don't, I feel like there's <laughs> a definite benefit to a lot of people in making your bed. But for some reason for me, it just didn't click. I was like, I'm just getting back in this thing. So I wanted to replace that with something that was actually going to be more, I guess, beneficial to me in a way. Mm-hmm. But you can't do a one minute yoga session, really. <laughs> and it is, it is, a, there is a lot to that. But just when you're winning right away. Mm-hmm. Here's here's a suggestion. Here's a thought, a challenge, Austin, for gotcha. CJ, oh. starting tomorrow until our next podcast, until we air it. Let's see. Let's have him make his bet every day and see if this mindset changes. Yes. My mindset towards making my bed? Yeah. Towards making your bed and then how that, did that affect you throughout the day? Yes or no? You know, just on, you know, kind of honest feedback. Hey, you know what? I I started making my bed every day and guess what? I still hate it. Doesn't change my mindset. (laughs) As a matter of fact, it makes my mind worse for the rest of the day knowing I've got to get in and mess the bed up. I don't think it'd make it worse at all. (laughs) me, me and CJ will just send each other Snapchats of us making our beds in the morning. There you go. 
I mean, I would do it, but I just, <laughs> I don't what, know. Do you, what do you mean would do it? You're He's struggling. He's struggling. Here. <laughs> okay, I can do it. <laughs> and I, I look at this negative mindset. Some days I do, and some days I don't. I suppose I'll take that challenge too, and make sure that. Well, do you feel? Do you honestly feel different? Um, no, not necessarily. But it is a task. It, it is a task accomplished. So again, that sets the tone for the day. Right. So if I take that task but make it productive, you know, it's the first task of the day, though. You start your day yeah. out task it's oriented. The very, the very first not thing a task you're doing is waking person. up. So the first we'll, thing is true. We'll, we'll, the we'll big one though challenge. is the snooze. Steve, it's so easy to hit. There snooze. you go. Oh, your sheets under there aren't made. It's yeah, made. You just put the big comforter over top of everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, I don't. It's made. <laughs> there you go. There, it is made. Oh, it is made. So no, normally, I didn't do this today. Forgot. Oh, you put yeah, your my my decorative pillows. Yeah, your decorative <laughs> pillows, of course. <laughs> well, no, so there. Okay, so there is a lot to that, though. With like, you can really break that down into something amazing, right? Starting off on a good note, obviously, that's incredible. So, making your bed, that could be a really good thing. Going on a mm -hmm. walk, doing a little yoga session, like you don't skip over brushing your teeth, right? Yeah. No one ever's like, oh, I really don't want to brush my teeth this morning. Not brushing my teeth today. Yeah. You just wake up and I mean, obviously your mouth feels gross too, but think about like you brush your teeth, you're used to it feeling good after that's great. Well, think if you go on a walk or do a yoga session, like how good you feel after that, mm -hmm. even though you really don't want to do it before. Well then think mm -hmm. if you get in that habit and then you stop doing it, you're going to feel bad. Just like you'd feel like, like, oh, I didn't get my yoga in today. It's like, oh, I didn't brush my teeth today. Right. You know? Eventually, that's yeah. gonna; those are gonna kind of coincide there, where that's gonna be something where it's just a it's a habit. You feel mm -hmm. good in the morning and start your day off right. Mm -hmm. And you could do that. So for that, waking up, but also before you work out, maybe instead of like dreading it, maybe make a little list of this is why it's gonna be great, or this is the benefits for me, or something. Mm -hmm. So then you're mm -hmm. putting positive things in all the time. I like it. I do too. I think that's a good, a good ending. Yeah, Matt, I, you got to get going, don't you? Yeah, I got to get going. Yeah, got iron will. So I think that's a great ending. I think it's a good conversation, and we'll uh, check back in with CJ after our uh, until our next podcast. Our, our bed making. You our too. Making. I bet Matt screws it up right away because he goes on his phone and forgets. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> nope. I wake up. I've been actually getting up earlier each day. For whatever reason, I'm like, hey, I'm just, you know, normally because of COVID and working from home, it's either, it's easier just to get up at seven, you know, and, you know, be ready for eight or whatever, first conference call at 730 or whatever it is. Um, but purposely, I'm like, nope, getting up at five today. Or, you know, I don't have anything until eight, but I'm getting up at five. And I've just been, you know, routinely, I, I used to be up at four o'clock every day. You know, and then COVID, there's just no, there wasn't a reason to get up that early because couldn't do anything. What are you going to do anyway? Couldn't, yeah. couldn't go anywhere, you know. <laughs> All you got to do um, is put a dress shirt on in front of your computer. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And and not right, only right. that, not, not, I mean, you know, the people I work with are all casual. So they're either in a zip up hoodie or, uh, you know, a, a t-shirt. And that's just, that's just the that's way we the roll. That's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's got to be a genuine human. All right. Well, Cool. Good Austin, talk. I hope we didn't ruin this too much. What? I hope we didn't ruin this too much. Oh, if anything, we made it way better. Way better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we are so entertaining. Okay. Yeah. All I, right, I guys. also told CJ the first vlog yes. should be done like next week. Oh, cool. That'd be cool to see. Yeah. You should just send me the rough draft now so I can look at it. Yeah. I have, so, I have zero figure patience. that out. I have zero pages. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I have it edited. I don't, I don't know how to put it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how to do anything. I know. All right, All right, guys. Get to study in Austin. Thanks, everyone. I will. CJ loves you. <sighs> See well, you. Me too, CJ. <laughs> Peace out. Bye. Bye. -bye.